Hey, true believers! I have returned. It's me, Manos. And uh, I wanted to talk to you about Preacher, AMC premiered. It's a new series based on the DC Vertigo classic by uh, Garth Ennis and Steve Dillon. And this show stars as uh, Jesse Custer, uh, Dominic Cooper, uh, Ruth Nega as uh, Tulip, and uh, Joe Gilgun as Cassidy. And I want to give you my first thoughts on this. Uh, this is going to be our uh, first episode of Primetime Crisis with Preacher. So, all right, let's uh, get going here. There have been years and years and years where people have been talking about doing a film version or a TV series based on Preacher. There's been an HBO show uh, that was almost ready to go. There was a Ben Affleck uh Film that was almost made, but I think that was supposed to be produced by Kevin Smith now that I think about it. And it's just fell through all the time. Here's the thing I have long maintained that it is going to be one of the last things that will be adapted into film or TV. And it's proven me wrong, actually. It's even beat Wonder Woman to, uh, to the screens. I have been feeling this way because, yeah, there was uh, a long discussion that Watchmen would be uh, the thing that would take forever, and I always maintained it was Preacher because of the subject matter, frankly. And what made me realize that was how much trouble Kevin Smith had with Dogma, and there was a lot of controversy and a lot of protesting about that film. And here's the funny thing, Dogma is Kevin Smith's pro-Catholic film. It criticizes, yes, but at the heart, if it's all his feelings, good and bad, about Catholicism, what it means to him. Uh, preacher ain't that. Uh, preacher is pretty much Jesse Custer realizing that God is on Earth and decides to go kick his butt because he deserves it. It's pretty blatant about that, and... There's no, like, crisis of faith or anything like that. It's about Jesse Custer, a preacher, wanting to kill God. And he goes about this search with uh, his friends uh, Cassidy, the vampire, and his girlfriend Tula. Um, he has this superpower, though. And actually, that's the thing that really started it. And, of course, we have that in the show. So, with that said, let's go to, well, what we see in the show. And it starts out in the space... It's really kind of vague where uh, this entity comes from. Uh, for those of you who have only watched the show, essentially it's sort of this being-creature thing, hybrid. Uh, uh, it's the child of a angel and a demon. And they hooked up, and they had a baby, and it was imprisoned in heaven, and it escaped. It went to Earth and bonded with Jesse uh, because it just couldn't maintain its form on, on its own, apparently. Uh, once it does that, Jesse develops this superpower to force anybody to do anything he says, and he calls it the word. Uh, and we see it displayed once in the episode. And it's very powerful. It may be even power, power, more powerful than Kilgrave, actually, now that I think about it, because there have been issues of this series where he's told people to die, and they just drop dead. Uh, he told one guy to count every pebble of sand on a beach, and he did. Uh, and he told somebody to do something rather graphic to themselves uh, in an off-color blue language, and he did. Uh, so, yeah, the series is kind of dark, and I surprised AMC did this. Yeah, it, yeah, gore is totally cool on TV now, especially with uh, the uh, cable channels like AMC, because we got uh, Walking Dead, and there was a lot of Walking Dead in this episode. Um, the pacing, the tone, 
uh, is all kind of there, and I feel like there's a lot of influence from the Walking Dead TV series. I'm not sure if that's totally a good thing, frankly. And that's one of the things I'm having tr kind of trouble um, as a fan kind of really uh, wrapping my head around the, this one episode. I, it's a one episode, and I really probably should relax. But this kind of gives us an idea of where the series is, or at least where the mindset is of the producers. And we watch uh, the alien entity, <laughs> not alien entity, the, the entity from heaven, uh, shoot through space and test out a couple of preachers to see if they work and they don't. They explode. <laughs> so it moves on to, to another one. Uh, trying to find that right fit. Uh, meanwhile, we're watching Jesse and he's having flashbacks of his father. He's obviously uh, just, he saw he talking to his father obviously before he shot to death and he's telling him to, you know, keep preaching the word. Uh, also, we have uh, these scenes of uh, Tulip evading these, these criminals and uh, pretty cool action sequence. Although I do have to question, like, if this is a good idea for Tulip, because Tulip has always been a really tough character uh, and pretty hardcore, but Ennis and Dylan have always kind of portrayed her as a human being. Uh, think, think in terms of, like, kind of the characters Harrison Ford plays versus kind of the characters that Schwarzenegger plays, and she's very Schwarzenegger in this. I mean, she takes down a helicopter off off screen uh, with a coffee can made into a bazooka or something like that. It's very A-team. And uh, it's awesome. That's a cool scene, but I don't know if that's really Tulip. Um, no fault to uh, the actress. She actually does a very good job with uh, the character. She seems very believable. Uh, meanwhile, Cassidy ha is uh, flying overhead in a, this plane, this sort of like gambling plane heading to Vegas, but it turned out to be a trap uh, by these vampire hunters trying to kill him. And there's a very cool Buffy the Vampire Slayer scene uh, in reverse where he uh, takes them all out and escapes. And he lands right in uh, pretty much the middle of the town that uh, Jesse is, is living. And then, of course, runs into him uh, in a bar fight. Now, Jesse is trying to figure out what he's doing with himself because people are terrible. <laughs> Everyone in this town is awful. And, you know, the sheriff is bad. Um, the, the general public is just, they don't care. They're not really moved. It, it doesn't seem like what he's doing is any good. And that's right out of the comic. Um, although it does spend its time doing that. And it's more leisurely paced uh, than the comic. The comic was able to do what this whole does in an hour within maybe a scene, frankly. Uh, one or two scenes and some dialogue. Uh, now, yeah, it's a different medium, so I understand that. Uh, but it is definitely a lot slower paced. And I, I guess I have a problem essentially with a, t with a certain tone that's going on in the show. It this, t this seems to take itself a little too seriously. There are some jokes here and there. Uh, but the thing that a lot of people don't think about is Preacher is pretty much a satire. And what Garth Ennis has kind of done is it's not so much a, a story about faith or religion. It's about uh, rebellion, rebel, uh, rebelling against the ultimate authority. And uh, he kind of takes the whole spirit of America and the, the folklore of, you know, Americans rebelling. I mean... Uh, Jesse is named Jesse Custer after Jesse James and General Custer. Now, in real life, of course, those guys were scumbags, but in the folklore, you know, they are kind of heroes that really kind of stood up, you know, against, you know, authority or whatever. <clears throat> and who is the most powerful authority? It, it's God. So he basically pits, you know, essentially the spirit of America versus God. And that makes really exciting uh, like action and horror and a lot of humor, and it is really satirical. Uh, we'll see if this show kind of goes into those territories. It hints that <clears throat> by killing Tom Cruise off camera, 
Um, so maybe, you know, the sh show might go into that direction. I would hope so. Um, there, uh, we do get to see our space in, uh, in one brief scene in Sheriff Root a couple times. To be honest, I didn't know that was Sheriff Root because he is so downplayed and not very interesting. Sheriff Root is basically the drill sergeant from, um, uh, uh, from that Kubrick film. Uh, oh, I can't remember the name of the Kubrick film. Full Metal Jacket? Full Metal Jacket, thank you. He's basically that guy, uh, done as a sheriff, and he's awful and racist and hateful. And you could see why his son tried to kill himself. Um, he's a terrible person. He, in the show, is just kind of there. Yeah, he's a jerk. I mean, there's some people beating up this poor guy in a mascot suit, and he doesn't seem to uh, give a damn. But um, other than that, he doesn't seem any more awful than your usual negligent bad cop. Uh, our space has a really uh, sweet scene, though. He's not even called that yet, because Cassidy is the one who calls him that, and that's the name that kind of sticks with him. Uh, we'll see if we get more deeper into his origins. Um, here's a fun fact. He actually, he was one of those teenagers that uh, tried to kill himself after Cobain killed himself, and it didn't go right, and his face kind of looks like that now, and he can barely talk. <clears throat> I like the use of the subtitles in the scene. And that scene he has with uh, Jesse is really well done, and he's a he's a pretty good actor. And I think I think the tone of it really does uh, work very well. It the character can be uh, the character can be funny, and you can also feel terrible and also be inspired by the character. It it works on he works on a lot of levels actually, and that's kind of what's so good about that character. Uh, so far, it looks like they're going in that direction, but uh, we'll see if uh, he goes all over the place like he does in the comic. Um, we do have a couple scenes uh, of him and Tulip. The show does seem to understand the folklore. So far, everything that's hinted at in the show seems like it's going in the correct uh, direction. Um, I hope we... Uh, I am so... Surprised they're doing a TV show based on this. I really am. Because um, it's really one of the most dangerous um, things I've seen in from a mainstream publisher. I'm really, to this day, I am impressed that DC and Vertigo uh, did this book, uh, frankly. Uh, I hope, my hope is they don't pull their punches. Because uh, this one only really... You know, makes fun of Tom Cruise and uh, wife beaters and Confederate soldiers. And, you know, okay, those guys are all jerks. I know that. But uh, we need to go after the big guns here. And uh, this comic did a lot. So we'll see if the TV show does. And I am willing to give it a chance. Uh, I'm hoping they don't pull their punches. And I gave this episode a couple uh, viewings, actually. I have to say, Dominic Cooper is really great. Uh, it's just <clears throat> Jesse uh, Custer, and he's really he's really energetic in his role, even though he sulks a lot through this episode. Um, he's one of those actors that has this kind of uh, energy where even if he's just sitting there, he's not just sitting there. He's thinking, and he can you know jump up or go off or you know at any point, uh, kind of like. A, Kind of like Robert Downey Jr., that kind of like uh, effect he has. Um, so yeah, this this episode does have some some good points. There are some like stuff that I don't know. I mean, uh, the part where he accidentally kills that guy in front of his mother, where he tells him to open up his heart. That scene just I don't know. Maybe he seemed a little silly. Um, I'm just glad we don't have to see that actor in every episode. Uh, <laughs> It's like, he's busy being in every commercial uh, ever. Um, also, I guess the biggest moment of what was the dramatic music when the potential villain is eating that tea bag. I mean, we see a character pull his own heart out in front of his mother, and then the next scene, uh, he eats a tea bag, and bum, 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 bum. It's like, yeah, it's not that bad. 
I guess it's scary. I guess the music was building up to the fact that they have discovered where uh, the entity is and where Jesse is. Speaking of uh, that entity thing, uh, it's different the way it enters him in the TV show than it did in the comic. Uh, I gotta say, I, I, I do like the way that it kind of like tried to uh, latch onto the correct compatible host. Uh, I thought that was interesting. And a good way to get uh, certain religious authorities realizing something is up and get it on the radar. Uh, so they would be after Jesse, even before Jesse realizes what's going on. Uh, I think that's kind of interesting. And that scene where it enters him at night is really creepy. It really, uh, it's really effective. I thought I thought it was very well done. Uh, so those are my first thoughts. I'm going to remain uh, fairly positive. I'm not certain if this adaptation is what I would hope for, but to be honest, the fact that it exists just blows me away. And uh, hopefully they'll try to stay true to the material and not pull their punches. Because if they pull their punches, there really is no reason they should do a Preacher series in the first place. Uh, so. I think that's all my first impressions are. What did you think of the whole Preacher AMC TV show? Uh, did you like it? Uh, did you hate it? Uh, are you surprised of anything I just told you about the show and the comic? Uh, I do recommend the comic uh, wholeheartedly. I think it's Garth Ennis' best work, and uh, I think it's his masterpiece. Yeah, he's done some excellent work with Hitman and Punisher and The Boys, but Preacher is, I think, his masterwork. So uh, hopefully they'll stay true to uh, the intent and the tone of the uh, comic. All right, I think that's all I have for now. So we'll talk about this next week. Until next time, push the button, Lindsay.